Man, I got PTSD every time I cut away, bro. All right, I appreciate you, Jalen, man, taking the time today. Um, let's jump right into it, man. March 5th, UFC 272, Jamie Malarkey. Back-to-back pay-per-view events for you, which is always a great thing. Thoughts on him and, and the matchup, man? Um, <clears throat> Jamie is a he's a tough guy. Um, really durable, comes forward a lot, a lot of pressure. Um, decent ground game, uh, okay striking. Um, it's a good. It's gonna be a fun fight. It's gonna be a good fight for me. Malarkey, you know he he lost his first two fights and then he's ripped off two straight finishes against pretty decent competition. You know, what is your assessment of his performances against uh, Kama Worthy and uh, Devontae Smith? Um, they're great. They're great fights. Um, his fight with Kama, I feel like Kama got caught. Kama got a little comfortable. Um, probably underestimated him a little bit. And I feel like, um, I feel like Devontae just kind of broke under the pressure or something, or he was had a, he fought with an injury or something. I, I feel like he didn't fight to his uh, full potential either. But that's not taking away anything from Jamie. Like he came in there, got the job done, made it look spectacular both times, got nice finishes. So. You know, uh, hats off to him. Do you think that might be a common theme that guys are underestimating Jamie? Yeah, yeah, man. I, that could be it. I don't know. Um, I I'm, that's that's probably the the possibility. But you know, as you see, like I don't know why people would underestimate him. Like even in his debut fight against um, uh, Riddell, like he he put on a, a tough matchup. Like he it was it was a pretty close fight actually. Like going back and watching it again. Um, yeah, he did his thing. He's not, he's not somebody you sleep on. Definitely. And, uh, I'd like to go back to your, uh, your last performance, man, at UFC 266 against Medich. Uh, a lot of people, you know, many people in many people's eyes, that was like the best performance. That's the best you looked ever at lightweight. Do you agree with that assessment? Um, yeah, I mean, as a whole, yeah, um, I guess, uh, you got to see my ground, improved ground game, you know, my, my takedown, um, and then what I normally do, finish people on the feet, and then went back to the ground, and then ended up getting a submission. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, as a whole, uh, there's a lot of uh, improvements to be seen in that fight. He He was undefeated heading into the fight. There was some hype surrounding him like he's the next like big thing out of europe at lightweight he's gonna come in here and crush everybody deep down inside how good does it feel to derail a hype train because that was the second time you did that in the ufc um you know it's 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 just what i do like <laughs> if if you're undefeated i want to fight you i want to take away that oh like you know you can have all the hype you want like you know, I had a lot of hype when I came to the UFC too. So, you know, like mine got stopped for it. It got halted a bit. So, you know, it's just it's just the game. Man. It's just, it's just, it, it is what it is at the end of the day. Do you feel like, you know, there's a lot of focus on Habib, right? He was undefeated. He won the title. He retired. Is it overhyped, though, like being undefeated? You know what I mean? Like sometimes it just doesn't happen. Well, it barely ever happens. Habib's the only one. Yeah, um... It, it's pretty overhyped. Like for me, I feel like I feel like people put too much emphasis on that undefeated record, especially in MMA right now. Like people see like five and zero, six and zero, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, he's gonna be the next big thing." And it's not really, not really that case, you know. And then also, granted, like Khabib's whole case was different because he didn't continue fighting because of uh, you know uh, his personal like uh, stuff that he had going on, like you know with the passing of his father and everything. Um, but then, like, you look at John Jones, who I would consider is definitely, like, like in the octagon, one of the greatest fighters of all time, like, if not the greatest, because he's he has won um, no contest, or I guess it was DQ. But besides that, he's undefeated. He's beaten everybody in every way at their game, on the feet, on the ground, like, wherever. He's a complete fighter. Um, yeah, but, but that being said, um, undefeated records don't really mean much. Eventually... John Jones will continue fighting. If Habib comes back, if he continues fighting, they'll eventually lose, right? This game, there's only a small margin of error, right? So it's going to happen if, if they continue. Yes, yeah, the, the game's always evolving. Um, 
you know, the next generation comes in and gets better and better and better. And they, they watch your style, watch your skills. They watch you on TV and they're thinking of ways to beat you and they execute that game and then they do it and they come and beat you. So it's not, it always happens. Like, I think well, the one person that stood the test of time was definitely uh, Mayweather, but, you know, that's boxing. It's like one way to win, one way to lose, like punches. You know, that's only one uh, skill you have to focus on. So, Yeah, I was having a conversation about this the other day with Dan Hooker, and he said, man, I think Mayweather – he said Mayweather's a time traveler because, like, how could you even do that? Like, how – like, he knows things that nobody knows. Like, <laughs> he has his ability, right? <laughs> Yeah, without a doubt, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, at 155 in the UFC, you're four and one. You know, I mean, you've had a good run. The only setback is to uh, Fravello, Matt Fravello. Um, how big of an impact did that fight have on you? Well, I haven't lost since that fight, <laughs> so it yeah. had a huge impact on me. Um, it that was like my turning point where I was like, I lost to somebody I feel like I shouldn't have lost to um i fought injured um it was just just so much stuff like mentally physically like going on in my life like outside of just the fight that was just uh i was like man like it made me like reassess my whole career like you know what like if you're gonna do this like do it with conviction do it now put all your focus into this um you know like just take it by storm. Do do what you got to do. You want to be a champion. You want to get that title shot. Like you want to fight for the belt one day. So you got to do it now. You got to put leave no stone unturned. So at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, like you did everything you could. Even if you, like you know you touch it or not, you did everything you could. Was it about like separating things? You know what I mean? Not letting things outside the cage affect things inside the cage. Definitely, that was like one of the biggest things. You know, I had to learn. Um, I because I fought that fight injured. Um, mm -hmm. I had. I torn, torn meniscus. My meniscus had been, it had been messed up on and off, but like it just, it got really bad that camp. And I was like, you know what? Like, like F it, I'm gonna just still fight anyway. It was like, it, it got messed up really bad, maybe like two and a half weeks, like out of, like, uh, uh, leading up to that fight. But I was like, I'm just gonna go in there and just thug it out, do my thing. And it like messed me up like my last couple weeks of camp because like I couldn't, um, I just stopped. I couldn't be, I wasn't able to defend takedowns and, uh, have a sense of urgency that I normally would like in camp so uh it showed in the fight and that just it just sucked you know I feel like we fight like nine more times I, I win every other every other time you know so it is what it definitely. is definitely that that we were talking about earlier that margin of error man you never know what's going on in in a fighter's camp or his physical uh status going into the fight and and the other fighter can capitalize and, and get that win you know what I mean take that that undefeated record uh, yeah, it happens. <laughs> yeah, it, it does happen. Um, for yourself, you know, you were matched up with uh, Jamie Malarkey back in the good old days, you know, before the pandemic in 2020. It, uh, it was supposed to, you went to New Zealand and uh, you were supposed to fight him, but you ended up fighting his teammate, Josh Kulabau. Uh, you spent some time preparing for Malarkey. How valuable is that time, you know, you spent preparing for him in 2020 for this camp? Um, honestly, it as far as the preparation goes it's it hasn't it hasn't like added any value but mentally it added a lot of value because you know i already studied him uh i watched his tapes i've watched his style i'll, fo I'll follow his career as he's been in the ufc mm -hmm. so um yeah i've kept my eye on him so it was just it just makes perfect sense it just makes everything that much easier uh the preparation for this camp physically has just been through the roof like i feel great um mentally like i feel like solid it's bulletproof so yeah i just can't wait to go do my job and have fun you know um execute my game plan you know even if the game plan don't work you know i got plan a b c d mm -hmm. all the way until i get my hand raised you know so i'm ready ready for this one what has been the the core group around you for this camp you know the coaches the training partners um same 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 people same I don't really switch stuff up too much. Um, doing my jujitsu with Sean Ruiz, and then Anthony Gonzalez is my head striking coach, head MMA coach, and then um, my coach Ozzy has been coming out from uh, New Jersey to help me with my grappling and wrestling. He's been like a big, big aid to me, big help. So yeah, you know, I'm I'm ready for whatever, wherever this fight goes. Uh, I've been training at Millennia, I've been training at Ruka, and then American Gym, and Carlson Gracie Riverside, my normal gym. So. Doing my thing, it's another camp. Millennia 
uh, I was speaking with uh, Georgie last yeah. week, and uh, he was, and you trained with him, you know what I mean? And there, he's telling me there's like Russian guys everywhere, wrestlers, and it must be good to have a place like that to just go there and, and be able to, you know, spar with certain types of body types and, and skill sets, right? Yeah, it's always good. I mean, it's always been like a um, like a middle ground for us to always like work with like different gyms, different people, different styles. So I was always uh, show love to Romney, going out there, giving uh, getting some work in out there. So it's always been good. They always treat me like family. So you know, much love. Your last three, you know, fights have been finishes uh, on the ground, right? Not necessarily just submissions, but um, you know, on the ground. Do you envision another one on the ground, or do, could you see yourself, you know, ending this one on the feet? You know, I'm I'm not really making any predictions because you never know. I always say I'm gonna get I'm gonna finish on the feet, and then ends up going on the ground lately. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm confident wherever the fight goes. Um, if I get the finish on the ground, I get the finish on the ground. I do got like uh, some fun stuff on the feet though, some exciting stuff that I want to set up. So. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully I, I finish on the feet, you know, and get a good, get a, get a, get a finish and get, get a, get a bonus that night. So we'll see. For sure. And, uh, you know, MMA, it's, it's all about streaks, right? Until you enter that top five range in a, in a division, because in a top five, you could win one, lose one, still get a title shot. Uh, so do you feel like this one, you know, with your streak you're on and, and Jamie, you know, I mean, he's on a decent streak himself that the winner will end up being able to crack that top 15 later this year? You know, I, I believe so. I feel like this is definitely um, – it'll open a huge door to to the winner for sure. Uh, that's how I've been looking at it. That's how I've been treating it. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, you know, he, he plans on cracking the top 15 also later this year. And I plan on doing that soon, a little bit sooner than him. Uh, a couple more before I let you go. Uh, this one is about MMA fans. You know, the, the fan base is it's pretty insane. You know, sometimes they're – they're great. Sometimes they're they're crazy. Um, what do MMA fans obsess about too much that fighters really don't care about, in your opinion? Damn, I don't know. <laughs> um, man, it's, I don't know, dude. <laughs> Let me give you an example. I could give you an example, right? Because I've asked a few fighters this. Is uh, the weigh-ins. You know how a fighter looks at the weigh-ins, like, Oh, he's drained. Like, you know, like that was a tough cut. You know what I mean? Like, he's not going to be able to fight tomorrow. And then the next day, the dude comes out and just smashes the other dude in the first round, right? It looks normal. Something like that. Yeah, dang. I still don't have anything off of that. All right, all right, all right. It's all good. <laughs> I'll, I'll hit you up again. Next time, I'll, I'll, I'll bring yeah, it up. Next time, yeah, I'm going to have one. Line. All right. Um, PTSD in combat sports, not CTE. PTSD from let's say uh, an, an injury or or a, a weight cut or, or just damage taken in a in a fight. Have you experienced this and and overcame it, or have you seen it in in other fighters? Man, I got PTSD every time I cut weight, bro. I hate saunas. I do not like being in a like. I could sit in like the portable sauna, but if I gotta sit in the like the the big like wooden sauna, fuck that shit messes with my mind. It's a mental battle. I'm like. I'm like, okay, I can breathe. I'm good. I'm good. I got just mentally prepare for that because, man, I, I got, I had a bad cut one time. It was like, on a, like a local circuit. Like I was, I was fighting, and I, man, I'm, I think I missed by like two pounds, and it was just a terrible cut. It was like I don't know what happened. I was just sitting in the sauna for hours, could not lose. I was sweating, wasn't losing no weight. I started running with the with plastics on still didn't lose any weight and i was like what's going on so yeah that was that was wild they gave me some ptsd but like that was like man that was years ago that was so many years ago oh sweet sweat oh my god the the um the smell of sweet sweat is gives me ptsd they have new scents now that are like they have like the i think it's like the citrus lime or something or a citrus smell Perfect. No smell after a while. They have like scentless sweet sweat now. Perfect. But the original smell of sweet sweat, dude, every, I could smell somebody in the gym with it on like from a mile away. And I'd be like, bro, like, like I was like, who has sweet sweat on? Like, like why? Like, get away from me. Stay, like, stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> but once, it, once the weight cuts over and, and you, you know, you make weight, does it give you a mental boost though? 
you know, a yeah. little bit that you went through that and you're like, hey, it's over. Now I could get in there and have fun. That's like the biggest like serotonin boost you can get. Like mm. you suffering for for weeks and hours and then like minutes up until the weigh ins. It's like hurry up, like can we like just get on the scale so I can drink this and then finally boom, you step on the mm. scale, you're good. They tell you announce your weight, ah, uh, you flex on them <laughs> and then yeah, it's that's like that's the best the best part. Everything tastes better after you weigh in. Everything mm. smells better. Like it's amazing. All right, one last question before I let you go. Kevin Lee, you know, once he got released by the UFC, he got signed to Eagle FC, and then they announced that he would be paid in crypto. What are your thoughts on uh, cryptocurrency, and would you ever entertain the idea of getting paid in crypto with your fight purse? I like crypto. Uh, I, I'm invested in a bit in crypto. But I don't. I'm not sure about getting paid in it, though. I'm not sure how I'd feel about that just yet. Um, it depends. It depends on if it's low, if it's high, or you know where the value is, what the market's looking like. Yeah, I'd do it. But like as of right now, because because I invested in Bitcoin because I thought I was dipping, and then it dipped, and it kept dipping. So I was like, fuck. But now it's going back up, so I'm a little happy. So I was like, damn. <laughs> All right, well, well, good luck on the on the Bitcoin, man. I think it, you know it is something that's uh, volatile. Let's just say that, right? Yeah. Um, March fifth, man, UFC two seventy two. You're back in action, Jalen. Appreciate the time. Good luck on the rest of the camp and the fight, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate the time.